I feel like the opening shot of this video should be this beautiful, like, me painting my nails, except that someone once told me I had man fingers, and also, my nails are already nice and pretty, so I don't want to do that. So I have been carrying around my entire nail polish collection, which is this, for the last six years in this stupid plastic tub ever since I moved out of my parents' house. And I got it at Walmart for I think a dollar during like college move-in season. And it is horrible at its job because all of the nail polish, I don't think I would ever use the, the colors on the bottom. And when I was moving between dorms one year, I dropped it in my car and there's still bottles of nail polish in the bottom of my car. So I wanted to design something better. And in that process, I also wanted to take you on my journey of how I design things and how I create things because when I have problems in my life, I really like to build my own solutions and not buy them because I am cheap, but also because I think it's fun and then it's truly custom to your needs. Instead of just giving you the plans and showing you how to glue it together, I'm gonna to show you how to design your own. All right, so the general idea that we have is um, kind of a book design where you have the two pieces and it opens up and then you have all your nail polishes sorted on the inside. Um, we want this to be an easy, cheap DIY project with a little bit of classy flair. So what we're gonna be doing is taking birch plywood and then staining it dark like walnut. So we don't have to pay for walnut, we can still use really cheap Home Depot project board, but we can attain that look in a way. It's a relatively simple project, um, but based on my own collection and the guess of what yours might be, we decided that we wanted to hold at least 50 bottles of nail polish it has to be durable to an extent. Um, it must be able to hold varying sizes of nail polish. So anything from, you know, small nail art bottles to like the giant OPI sized ones, um, it should be able to fit and not fall out. And then um, we wanted it to be portable, not like throw it in your suitcase portable, but able to carry it from work to home or to a sleepover or something like that. So the first thing I did with all of this information, just like I always do, is draw some really quick sketches in my notebook. All right, so let's open up Illustrator and make a new document. I used to size my document to the work piece that I had available, but for design projects, my new tactic is to make a gigantic artboard and then puzzle all the pieces onto my work piece sized artboards at the end. It helps me keep complicated designs laid out the way I want to while I'm working on them and then cut them later. Based on the measurements and then sketch I made, I want the holder to be 10 inches across on the inside and each shelf four inches tall to allow for the tallest of nail polishes to still fit. Including the thickness of the board, that puts me at a height of 12.5 inches. Based on my measurements of the nail polishes, I want the shelves to be 1.75 inches deep. So I'll put those measurements in and make the side panels. The next step is to add tabs for the joinery so that these can fit together. I find it's easier to just do these by hand. There are some softwares that let you make boxes, but honestly, I think it takes longer and you can't customize it the way I like. What I do is open the rectangle tool and decide how big I want my tabs to be. In this case, I decided on half an inch and make the width the width of your material. Then I just lay them out on the edge so that each rectangle is touching the previous one. There's absolutely a way to do this with blend path, but I prefer keeping them all separate objects and it doesn't take too long. I'll copy paste this to its join sign, then I delete the diagonal ones so that the tabs will fit together. Next, I used rectangles to figure out where my shelves were going to go on the side panels. This shows me where I need to put tabs for the shelves to slot into. On the side panels, I'm putting in rectangles where the front of the shelf will meet the panel. I toyed around a bit with making it angled, but decided against and undid it. Next, I made the shelf bases and fronts. By lining them up with the original back rectangle, I just let Adobe Illustrator snap my dimensions so I know they'll all match up. Then I went in and adjusted the height to be the 1.5 inches I wanted. For good looks, I added a negative space in the center of the front and then the tabs for the joinery. Last minute here, I decided to extend the back of my box so that the sides would have a clean face with no joinery, but that's totally up to you. Now, I find it easiest to use the subtract tool in Pathfinder to do the joinery, but you need to make sure that the shapes overlap to do that. So I'm just dragging the edge of my box out to clearly overlap that line, but leaving the important three sides alone so it'll still fit together. Then I put in my slots for the shelves to fit into. Again, I use rectangles as spacers and to make sure all of the dimensions are what I want. 
it's sort of a hacky way to do more traditional CAD in Illustrator. Now, here's the fun part. We just select and subtract. You'll notice I only did this on the left side. Now that the piece is done, I'm just going to copy, paste, and flip horizontal to make the other side. No point in doing it twice. I'm gonna copy and paste to make three shelves and three shelf fronts and voila, I'm done. Now I'll just need to arrange them onto whatever size pieces of wood I'm using and send them to the laser cutter. Now that our files are done, let's load this puppy into the laser cutter. I didn't send the job yet. Oh my gosh, meet our interns! <laughs> Because the parts are kind of charred on the outside and I want to be able to touch it and handle it, I'm just wiping, wiping down the burned edges a little bit. First things first, let's even see if this fits together. So... So one of the challenges was figuring out how tall to make it and how tall I could make this middle beam. Um, I wanted to make sure to leave a gap so that the color could show through. But this looks pretty good because this one just barely fits, but it does. All right, this is just testing to see if it all fits together, but I want to stain it dark like walnut first. So I'm actually gonna have to take it apart now, break out the foamy brush and the walnut stain and hit it. I need a tarp. All right, now that we've got everything stained, it's time to glue it all back together. So I'm gonna be using this super glue, um, CA glue. You can use wood glue, although I'm going with super glue because it dries clear and I stained it before I glued it so that I could get every surface. So I just wanna make sure to use a clear glue. All right, so I haven't put these side pieces on yet, but it looks really good. I really, it doesn't look like a cheap project. It looks classy and put together and I like it. One more side to go. All right, so now we're done building this and or constructing the laser cut pieces. I'm gonna let it dry and let the stain set and the glue set and then time to put the hinges on and finish it. Okay, so now I have my two clamshell pieces and there's a couple ways to put the hinges on, um, but what I'm gonna do is actually put these together and clamp them shut so that when it's closed, there's no gap. And I've marked where, the, where I want the hinges to be, so all I have to do is place them. So I put two screws on each hinge on, and before I finish it, so I don't, you know, drill too many unnecessary holes in my wood, I'm going to take the clamps off and see if it works. Um, so I can have it like this. I can have it all the way open like that, and I can close it, oh, and it sits nice and flush. So I'm going to go ahead and finish and put the rest of the screws in. All right, so we have our hinges, and voila! So one of the points that I was trying to get across with this project is that if you need something around your house or around the office or anything, just make it. Like, nothing is stopping you from designing and building things yourself. And that's one of the most beautiful things I think about engineering and making is that it empowers you to do that. You can just whip one of these out on a Friday afternoon, um, 
and that's something you'll have in your house or in my case my office because <laughs> that's the life I leave for a really long time. Anyway, that was another hopefully, this also belongs over here, fun episode of Beauty and the Bolts and uh, what am I supposed to tell you to do? Oh, subscribe. Please subscribe. And also, super exciting, we now have a Patreon and you should go check out our Patreon, back us on Patreon. We post extra stuff and extra projects and things that we cut out of videos on Patreon. Um, and also, we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization, so you'll feel good about yourself because you're supporting uh, public school education and getting girls involved in engineering and making and all that fun jazz. So hopefully we'll see you over there. Thanks for watching. This is Isla from Beauty and the Bullet with Andrew behind the camera. Oh, and special thanks to Steph, one of our summer interns, for helping make this project possible.